Butterfly gon' recap this and say God he caught a 30 on the dime road. So all y'all wanna know what happened, I'ma tell you what happened. He got smoked. That was crazy out there. Time SP to nobody that knows body. Hit his area with 51. Everything in the fire flies. When you start rapping like that, listen. Why you keep ducking my man? Who? Look. Who, nigga? Yeah, what's wrong with him? E? So who? I so? Know, what? Yeah. Oh. 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 Come on. Then look at that. Come on, nigga. Come on. I want to fuck his You think so? I told yeah. you you could. I told you what you could. We could put up. I told you that. He, I promise you, he don't want to. He don't want to fuck with me at this point. And right now, today, I got he, it he's on just surf. A far I got it on yo, surf. I listen to me. Hey, I got it on surf. Listen to me. Keep running from him. He should stay far away from me today. Far. We gotta see, move. Yo. We gotta see. Listen. You already know what it is, man. Salute to the subscribers, that notification gang, etc., etc. Don't let none of that get too far ahead of you. Know who I be. Follow me on IG. Vada underscore fly. Tell your mama I said hi. Salute to everybody that follows me on the gram or that watches this content, whether religiously or in passing. So there you have it. Joe Budden basically asked Murder Mook, why is he ducking Sue Surf? Now, I know Joe Budden is one who is into battle rap. He's probably not as deeply entrenched with it as, say, the fans of the real, you know what I'm saying, the culture. I'm sure he watches things. He knows what's going on. And Sue Surf has been on Joe Budden podcast pretty frequently, like about a couple times a month. I've seen him on there. He has good points. He does great views, and he has a a good way of going about it. And they do ask him the needed questions, like they ask him about the Quilly situation. They ask, like they don't they don't hold no punches. They, I hate sometimes when people get in interviews and they know that there's an elephant in the room that people want to know the answer to but they won't ask the question, but they do. And I do respect the fact that they'll be like, yo, what's up with you in this quilly city? They're like, they'll ask. Um, so, Murder Mook basically responded and said, he don't want to battle me right now. Like, I promise you, like, now, 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 now is not the time to see Murder Mook versus Surf. And I'm going to be honest with you, I would, I agree. I definitely agree. Um, Sue Surf has been having a rough go. In the past 60 days. I'm going to say it like this. He's been having a rough go. He won all of those battles in a row. Did his thing. Got to the Cortez battle. And when he got there, the whole, I'm excited, lightning, frightening, Mike Tyson, the ice, and brightling. Like, you know, he got into that situation. So, you know, it is what it is. You have people that's, the, the, the road is divided. You got the group of people who feel like, nah, he stole that shit. And he fell out with different artists. Like Jack Boy Maine and him have had fallen outs. And other artists. And, uh. I seen clean going at him about it, you know what I'm saying? He said that shit wasn't even that dope to be stealing, to be acting like great minds think alike because that wasn't no great shit, quoting clean 100%. That's what he said. Salute to him. Um, and then to, to, to make, you know, my pops once told me, there is no situation in life that can't get worse. So you have to be happy for what you have because so you see situations go from bad to worse. So he had that situation and then... He started the Midnight Madness thing with Jack Boy Main and then Bill Collector. And then Bill Collector and Jack jumped out the whip. They basically are like, yo, you're taking all the credit when things go good. But when they don't go good, it's where's everybody at? Uh, I think Surf was saying something like, what'd he say? What'd he say? He said something like, uh, it's, 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 it's my pockets that's involved. The other guys, you know, and they're not putting up the bread like me. But then the other folks are like, yo, how can you say you're putting up bread when you got a sponsor? Like if you got, if it's three of us in a business together and we're putting in bread, but you got a sponsor that's helping just you out, they're not sending all three of us the money, they're sending you the bread and you're using it and acting like it's your bread. It was just a nasty situation. Like the Midnight Man and shit, it was good. It had good intentions, but it just went bad. Bad like the Brooklyn Nets. It, it just went bad really fast. And the reason why it probably went bad so fast was the communication. I think it was a lack of communication, a lack of uh, everyone's intentions being clear and everybody knowing what was going on. And when there's no cohesiveness in the group, you have some shit like that where one person is, is operating off this sheet of music and the other person is operating off this sheet of music, but we're singing at the same time, so the pitch is off key. When it first started, it was a great idea, but then, you know, shit got watered down once niggas, you know, the belt started going in and this person had that belt and these niggas is fighting over that belt and then, like, it just was nasty work all together. And then, when you have Stumbles feeling like he won money, 
that he wasn't paid and then Surf says something like, you know, he says something to the nature of, would you, would you, would you, would you give a nigga money who stole one of your belts and you had to buy another one? It was just excuses, you know what I'm saying? Like it was every excuse but to pay the dude the money that was a lot, that was mentioned, you know what I'm saying? Like it don't even matter, like if a nigga, if URL, cause URL put out the tweet that led to this problem. If URL puts out the tweet saying it's gonna be $2,000 on the line and you retweet it, say, like, like agreeing with it, you've basically agreed with it, you know what I mean? So if you've agreed with it and then the battle happens and the dude don't get his money, of course he's gonna feel the way he's gonna feel. I bet with people all the time, but when I bet with people now, especially people on social media, I make them send me the money first because it's like, yo, I've been through shit where a nigga will be like, yo, I'm gonna bet you 200, Boston's gonna win the championship. Boston don't win the championship, and the nigga's like, nah, I'm good. You send them the cash app, they'll decline it. Not saying that I bet that much, but you have to, the money gotta be in position. So, when you deal with an MC like Murder Moot, Murder Moot, regardless of how you feel about him, he might not be having the best battles, he might not be whatever. I know the Reed battle wasn't great either, and me and Mook have had, you know, it, it, like, cause the thing is, I call it like I call it so I can't spoil it, so, Emotions are the enemies of facts. When you tell niggas the facts, they don't like that shit. You know what I'm saying? They don't like. They don't mind you saying the facts as long as it's not nobody hearing it. You know what I'm saying? Like if it's me and just three of my niggas, and I'm like, yo, this battle was not that good, booty booty boo. They don't give a fuck. But when you look down at the bottom of the screen, it got five thousand views, ten thousand views, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, whatever I do, I do, I do numbers. Put me with anybody, and my numbers don't matter. And there's no league. No fucking platform, no nothing. I do my own shit with me and Showtime SP, and sometimes that be fucking niggas up. Like, how the fuck is he doing them? Trust me, if I was you, I would hate me too. So, Mook, who's a legendary figure in battle rap, you know, he feels like, yo, you don't want to battle me right now. And the reason why is because what does Mook do best? Angles, you know? He's a very great angler. And the, the, the things that he would be able to probably put together and break down and shit like that, especially if it's in a smaller room, because Moog is probably, probably not looking to get back on big stages anytime soon. I don't see that happening. You know what I mean? I just don't see. Uh, he did better in the controlled environment. When he battled Tate Rock, it was a controlled environment. They made sure nobody was in the room, niggas was on the other side, and like all of these rules and stipulations to make it more conducive to help the situation. I'm a small room, I'm battling, I'm using bars, you know what I'm saying, especially if it's a big crowd, because the Reed Dollar shit in front of a big crowd just wasn't like that. But, uh, Joe Budden is like, I put the money up. I put whatever behind Surf, because he believes in Surf. I, I do believe in Surf too, you know what I'm saying, but I think that uh, a lot of his problems from recent have came because he ventured over into the business of battle rap. The business of battle rap is, I would never have a league, I don't throw events, I don't want no, that business of battle rap is a motherfucker. Like, cause you, you, you see a lot of these league owners, you know, they'll put money into battlers, sometimes a battle rapper will show up, sometimes they show up with two and a half rounds, sometimes they recycle material. It just be like a huge investment for sometimes the battles not to go right, you know what I'm saying? Like. Uh, ARP just had Reed and Big K and that battle was not good, you know what I'm saying? Reading off their phones and shit like that. So that's what I'm saying, like you, it's always a crapshoot. And nowadays, a lot of the battles that are actually the good ones are not coming from the people who've been in battle rap since the beginning. Like, Loaded Lux versus Geechee. Lux didn't do that great versus Geechee. Salute to Loaded Lux, you know what I'm saying? Everything that he got going on, but he didn't do that good versus Geechee. He knows he didn't do that great. That's probably why you will see him back outside again hopefully versus a name like a Daylight or a B-Dot. But, uh, you know, Reed's battles, some of them been good, some of them haven't. Uh, Ice battles, some of them be good, some of them are not, you know what I mean? Like, and, and all of those guys from that Legacy class. I seen Verb post a picture with like all of the dudes from um, Ultimate Mad, not Ultimate Mad, this. Slaughter, Total Slaughter. And a lot of those dudes that was on Total Slaughter are not producing at a high level nowadays because it takes an inept amount of ability to be able to produce at a high level for 10, 15 years. You know, you got, I think it was Rex in that picture, Disaster was in there, Marv One, Big T, Verb, like all of them cats that was in that Total Slaughter. How many of them are really still producing at a high level? Rap, I'm not talking about just rapping, I'm talking about dominating. Maybe in that picture, I don't think any, you know what I mean? And, but they're still around, they're still relevant. You know, they're never gonna not be relevant. But, uh, Mook is like, yo, 
he don't talk much. Like you don't see from Mook. You don't hear from Mook. Mook ain't outside every day on camera or going back and forth on Twitter or debating with niggas on how he feel about he's not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Him and Lux was supposed to have a podcast that was supposed to be starting. I don't really know where it's at or if that's still gonna be a thing. But he knows that if he was to take a battle like Surf, he's gonna get a super big bag, a super bag, and you know, he's probably gonna be in in on his shit. Now, can Surf still win? I mean, yeah. Surf's next battle is gonna say a lot about what direction he's coming in, if he can overcome, you know what I'm saying, a lot of the angles. Cause he created so many new angles. I haven't seen somebody create so many angles for themselves in a little minute, you know what I'm saying? I know he loves to use the word narrative, you know what I'm saying? The niggas drive narratives and shit like that. I know he said he don't watch blogs and, and that's cool. You might not watch blogs, but a lot of people do, man. A lot of people do. Hey, hey come on, sit down, let me holler at you for a second. You might not watch blogs, my nigga, but there's a lot of motherfuckers who do. But um, yeah, Joe Budden's like now is uh, he wants to he still wants to put that money on Sir. Joe Budden believes in Sir. He's always believed in him. He supported him from the beginning. You know the Jersey thing. He's done music with him back in the days. Ever since Joe Budden's podcast been blowing up, he's been doing you know more and more podding and shit like that. And it's good for Sir. Cause the thing is, Sir is not. He's not a likable. He's not a dislikable dude. He just does some dislikable shit at times, you know what I'm saying? And we, I guess we all do in some nature, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I know a lot of y'all was uh, trolling, talking about, you know, Kevin Durant wanting out of Brooklyn and shit like that. Kyrie Irving wants out of Brooklyn, too. He wants to go to the Lakers and shit. But my thing is, at the end of the day, Kevin Durant wants it the easy way. He wants it the easy way. He wants to go to Phoenix or go to Miami where he doesn't have to work and he could just coast himself to easy championships. The man said he don't want to go to Miami unless Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, and Kyle Lowry are still there. That is the most ridiculous shit I've ever heard in my life. Like, if you wanna leave, it's, so what? You can leave. If you wanna leave, go to another team, well, cool. Nobody wants you somewhere you don't wanna be. But to sit there and try to set the precedent of, oh, I don't wanna be here unless him, him, and him is here. You don't have that option. You do not have the option of where you're gonna go. I mean, you do, you don't have a no trade clause, so they could fucking send you to Detroit if they want to. But if they're gonna accommodate and work with you, there is no way you can choose the scenario of where you go. I wanna, if I go to Utah, Donovan Mitchell has to be there, or this person has to be there, or Jimmy Butler has to be there. But what do you think they're gonna take back? Do you think, do you think a motherfucker's gonna take back a skateboard and a large pizza for a Mercedes Benz? Like, any team that you go to, the situation is going to be worse than the current situation that you have. No questions asked. The situation will be worse because you're going to have to give back too much to get you. This nigga running around acting like he Peyton Pritchard or some shit like that. Nigga, you one of the best players in the league. They're going to want a starter, an all-star, and seven or eight draft picks for you. And Brooklyn is smart. They, rate, they make the price so high. Make the price so high that nobody wants to trade for you. I'm gonna make the price high as a motherfucker. You seen Rudy Gobert just get traded for five first, three or five, three, three first round, five first round draft picks? No, you are gonna you gotta give me 15 draft picks for this nigga. I've been saying I was gonna do a sports channel. I really need to do one, but I can just talk about all this shit all the time. It's gonna happen, I promise you. I'm gonna find a time to do it. But yeah, KD's bugging the fuck out, and if I'm Brooklyn, I'm trading his ass to the Sacramento Kings or somewhere that I want to get the best return from. I don't give a fuck how you feel. I don't care if you want to be in Miami. I don't care if you want to be in Phoenix. I'm going to trade you the way I can get the best return and let them deal with this shit. Kyrie, same motherfucking deal. He opts into his contract just to be the, I want to go to the Lakers. I want to go to the Lakers. For what, nigga? To be with a 38-year-old LeBron? And guess what? They're going to have to give back more. They want to talk about they want to get Russell Westbrook. Motherfucker, do you see what Russell Westbrook did last year? Do you see what Russell Westbrook did last year? Who the fuck wants him on the team? Please explain. This nigga missed all layups and turnovers and, and all kind of shit. And, and, and people would be like, oh, he was in the wrong system. The wrong system don't equal air balls. Missing free throws, missing layups, turnovers. People were so gassed. Russell Westbrook averaged a triple double, but the motherfucker had seven turnovers a game. You look past, see, they look past, they look past the fact, it'll be like, yo, you meet a nice chick, she got everything going for her, but she snore like a motherfucker. But you'll ignore the fact that she snores 
get married and then be mad at the fact that she snores like that was going to make her stop. But anyway, surf. Yeah, you got a lot of thinking about. You got some things to think about. Uh, uh, Murder Mook battle would, would be good. It would be a good look. Um, I know a lot of fans are going to be like, oh, Murder Mook ain't like that no more. I get it. Trust me, I do. I've heard everything and I've thought of everything that you could possibly say. But I will say this. Uh, if him and Surf get booked, you will watch it. You won't? You won't? Yeah, right, you'll watch it. I'm out, man. Salute to every single one of y'all. Shout out to my guy, Showtime SP. Gang, gang, since potty train. You know what it is. Blah.